Good morning and welcome to Hayden Congregational Church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Please rise and join me in the invitation to worship Trinity Hall. We gather today to worship the Lord, the missionary God. We worship Jesus, who touched the untouchable and loved the unlovable. We and so, let us worship in unity and in love. We gather together to worship and to go there as they work out all the mission. May be seated. likes to spread its arms wide. It loves to give shelter. It loves to gather people in. It doesn't matter if you are tall or hairy. or plaid. It doesn't matter how many legs you have. Some people worry that there won't be enough room under the big umbrella. But the amazing thing is, there is There is always room. And, you know, there are a lot of people in our lives every day. And those people, some of those people, are in need. 
and we run into them all the time. And we need to invite them under our umbrella. So let's work hard every day so that we can be kind and we can be welcoming and we can love everyone. Let us pray. Dear God, help us to be really good at sharing all we have with others. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you. Yesterday, my daughter Larissa turned 37 years old. And when she was little, because she was really cute, and because people knew she was adopted, people would tend to give her a lot of things. Well, she got used to that, and that developed into her thinking that everybody should share everything that they have, and all their food, and their belongings, and everything with her. So as a two-year-old, if people didn't offer to give her something that she had her eyes set on, she would just come right out and ask, can I have this? And most times, again, because she was cute, they'd give it to her. Well, I had to stop that, of course. And I taught her that that was rude to ask people for things like that. And so being the creative, crafty little girl that she was, she soon developed a different skill, and she learned how to get the same result, but not come right out and ask for it. She'd walk up to something that she liked, and she'd say, that's really cute, isn't it? And most times, people would say, yes, do you want it? And then give it, not most times, sometimes. Or she'd say, that looks really yummy. And then people would either share it with her or give it to her or whatever. So I had to draw a halt to that behavior also. <laughs> Today's reading was from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. And in that verse, those verses, we hear about how the crowds shared all that they had with the church. And nobody even had to ask for it or to give little hints that they wanted it. Today we're beginning a series of seven Sundays where the scripture text is all going to be from the book of Acts. And this series is going to go until through Pentecost. And the book of Acts, if you're not familiar with that, follows right after the four Gospels. And it gives us an accurate account of the birth and the growth of the early Christian church. So let's begin with a little background. Peter and John had just performed the miracle of healing the lame man that was in front of the temple when a great crowd then gathered around and that caught the attention of the priests. Well, they felt threatened by the apostles' power as they did when Jesus was alive, so they tried to stop that ministry. The crowd of people had seen this lame man laying on the ground every day in the very same place. And now he was up and he was skipping around and jumping for joy. So they couldn't deny that they obviously had seen a great miracle. They were in awe of the apostles' power and they all rushed in. Well, that created quite a stir. And the religious leaders arrested the apostles then and jailed them overnight and questioned them in the morning. Well, after they shared more threats, they let them go. And all the people that saw this were praising God for what had happened. Well, after the apostles were released, they returned to their meeting place and they prayed together with their believers. And the Holy Spirit started working right there in that place. Then an amazing thing started happening and everyone started sharing. Nobody was selfish and said, no, that's mine, I have to keep it. They all gave their, all of their belongings to the church. 
The church and the community were truly a united family in Christ. Some of the people were even selling their homes and their lands and fields, and then they were putting the proceeds at the feet of the apostles. That means that they laid down all of their possessions, and they entrusted it fully to the church. They gathered daily, they broke bread, they shared the word, they prayed, and they shared everything. The precious do donations that were given by the believers were then shared with people who were in need. Those people there were not only one in spirit, but they were one in purpose. That is such a beautiful model of the early church. It says in today's passage that the early church was not only united in heart and mind, but also in mission. In other words, they were not only united in who they were, but where they were going. They had a common purpose and a common mission. They were all headed in the same direction. I'm not asking you today, and I know nobody is going to go out and sell their houses and bring all of the proceeds to the church, but we can do other things to serve as a united family in Christ. Many years ago, this congregation worked together to form a vision, vision or mission statement. And then all of the ministries then were formed based on that mission statement to help us to be united in who we are and where we're going. You're going to find that mission statement in your bulletin on the very back page. And I'd like us to read, to get, read that together, please. Our vision is to share with people the love of God, to encourage commitment to Jesus Christ, and to show concern for human need as we serve the world and strive to bring God's eternal glory for all. Each of us has been given and received a special gift to serve others, and it's our responsibility to use that gift faithfully. Sharing with the love of God, as it says in our mission statement, comes in so many different forms. You'll also find in your bulletin on the insert a list of the teams of this church. And those teams each have their own goals, their own um, places that they need to go, their own ministries that they serve. And not every team is, is, speaks to each person. For example, a person who has gifts for the Christian education team may not have gifts for the property team, and vice versa. Or the people that are on the mission team might not feel called to be on the worship team, and vice versa. But I believe that in the teams that are offered here that support this church, there is a place for everyone. It was recently suggested by one of the teams of our church that I focus one Sunday on volunteer ministries and invite people to share why they serve the church in their volunteer capacities. And several people were specifically invited to share their experiences today, but I'll also have a time where I'm going to open it up if anyone else wishes to briefly share why they volunteer. First, I'd like to invite Betty Barnes to come up and share why she volunteers. Morning. Morning. The areas of the church in which I volunteer are the church council, mission team, which takes care of the blessing box, the choir. I'm the Lovick representative for this church. I help out in the kitchen with fundraisers. I'm on the care team. I help read scripture or the Lord's Prayer when needed. Um, I've done pulpit supply. I've ushered and been a part of our mission trips. I started volunteering in this church in 1974, 
even though I had attended here in high school and sang in the choir and was part of the youth group, um, it was when our family moved back to stay that um, the kids and I started coming here. Serving is my gift and in my nature to be a part of things by helping. I'm not one to just sit in the pew, but I rather would give, love, support, help, and lift up. My service is here is my way to honor and worship God. I find joy in helping others and being a part of the solution to their problems by offering food, coats, meals, rides. Probably the challenges I've seen were on the mission trips that I've participated in. Someone else is usually in control, and things don't always fall into place like you hope. Not everyone you encounter shows gratitude. We had a lady in New Orleans when we were there working on her home, and Gretchen and I tried several times to engage with her, but she was not interested. She was leery of us because she had been she had had a bad experience with some, with some other people who had come to help her, and they ended up stealing from her. And she was just frightened and a little standoffish. The lesson I learned is it's not about me. I can help where I can, and in spite of my best efforts, it does not always go in, as planned. But in the long run, God is to be glorified through me in my outreach in this way. My favorite way to serve is to feed people. Food is comforting and always makes people feel better. Our funeral dinners are a real blessing. And I know this because I've been on the receiving end of that. The scripture, Acts 4, 32 through 35, does speak to me. In the Passion Translation, it says, selfishness, selfishness was not a part of their community for they shared every day, everything they had with one another. For those who had much sold some of it and shared with others, not one person among them was needy. I am blessed with an abundance, so I feel this speaks to me to share. I would encourage others who may feel to try one of the many opportunities to serve at HCC um, to do that. Just give it a try and see if it fits for you and in your life and in your, the time that you have to share. You feel more connected, and the person you help may see Jesus in you. For me, the reward I receive is always greater than the help I give. Kristen has learned that she is only able to do so much and has learned to 
adapt to the helpers and attendees as necessary. She learns that from time to time she needs to cut some things out of her schedule to experience less challenging. So she says she just keeps repeating, changing things up, and says and stays super flexible. She enjoys serving hands-on and seeing or hearing the result. Kristen loves helping and seeing people smile and the friendship that is made and built. Kristen volunteers for this church, Craig Chamber Board, Love Aid Board, Northwest Colorado Health Hospice, Rebecca Lodge, and 4-H. She feels the joy of friendship and relationships that are built, that are, uh, the, the friendship and relationships that are built are a great reason to volunteer. Volunteering for something that you are a part of helps you fulfill fulfillment of the teachings and showing them different aspects in the areas whichever you choose to volunteer for. The more you volunteer, the more ideas you get from others. Thank you, Kristen and Emily. A couple of other friends who would rather not speak in front of others have shared with me why they volunteer. Dan Parrott is a very active volunteer member of the property team and on the church council, and he volunteers in other capacities throughout the year. And Dan said, being a volunteer just really gives him a tremendous feeling of being valuable to his church, community, and family. Volunteering makes him whole. And you know, you don't need to be an adult to volunteer. Our buddy Arden back here, four years old, he's been a good helper, haven't you, buddy? Yes. He's been a good helper here at the church when, he, when he's not at school. And he's been seen putting food donations away that people have given for the blessing box. And he loved doing that. He enjoyed doing that. He probably saw a picture of him during announcements. And he also helps his mom change the marquee sign outside. And just on Friday, while I was writing this sermon, he picked up feathers from the churchyard and he gave them to me. He shared them with me. And my favorite is this one that he says came from a gray flamingo. <laughs> it was in our churchyard. <laughs> Regarding volunteering, Arden told me that it's fun to help other people. All the things we can learn from a child. Would anybody else like to share briefly why they choose to volunteer at Hayden Congregational? Which is shy people. Well, it takes a village. And we are all that village. Thank you to all who work hard to serve and to continue to serve in any way, whether it's during worship or if you serve on a team or anything that you do. Those who serve as officers for the church council voluntarily put in many hours behind the scenes. Those who serve as representatives on the church council have great responsibility in making decisions to lead this church in the right direction towards a united vision. Those who serve on the teams that are listed here work hard to fulfill the tasks that their team is responsible for. Most of the teams are in need of more willing members, and those teams are indicated in your bulletin. It will tell you if they are, they're needing more members or not. I would encourage anyone who feels led to serve or maybe just learn more about any team of this church to write a note or to indicate your interest by circling that team in your bulletin and leave it here by the offering plate, but don't forget to put your name on there. Today's scripture text talks about the idea of unity and shared vision as a powerful force in the life of the church. If we all do our part in volunteering where we feel our gifts are best served, then we will be successful in fulfilling this vision for Hayden Congregational Church and fulfilling directives from Jesus. Amen.